Hi, this is James with Northern Arizona Wind and Sun. Today we're going to talk about a water pumping system. We're out here in Northern Arizona at a client's property. Um, he's got 20,000 gallons of water storage uh, in 11 SQF uh, 2 Grunfoss pump and about 13, 1400 watts of solar powering that pump and he can maintain uh, all of his water needs uh, for himself and his irrigation, his farm from that system. So the pump is set at 300 feet. Oh, from here you're pushing 50 psi. Yeah, this is the this is the lowest part. Um, so yeah, it's probably down a little bit higher psi. There's so many different numbers. There's so many different uh, valves around the property. Uh, at one time I knew them all, but. Mm -hmm. This was going to be the original house. This was the this was the pad, uh, and a, a couple of online uh, searches um, basically told us anywhere that you're close to a bluff, you can see this bluff wraps around the property. Uh, if you're within a hundred feet or so of that bluff, that's where you have your best chance of water gathering uh, because the shifts. Uh, leave big fissures for water to be there. So the well driller agreed with that and said, yeah, this is a perfect place for doing it. That's where we dropped it and, you know, right away hit a hundred gallons a minute. I'll never win the lottery. That's as close as I, I will ever come to winning the lottery is the day that all that water started blowing out. So we were pretty happy about that. Especially when you're trying to do what you're doing. Yes. You know? Yeah, without, without water, uh, agriculture is, it, it's tough so that was the make or break moment to you yeah and to be able to do it on solar um, that's why we have the big tanks because you have to have all that volume because we we don't have the power it's better to, to pump the the volume yeah uh, you just pump it up and store it there above yeah, ground yeah, it's yeah. way cheaper to store water above ground and pump it during the day than it is to put it especially off grid then to put a battery system in and pump it 24 hours pressurized yep yep so yeah it's it's a big battery yep potential energy so. and it's uh it's allowed us to make a living we're able to pay all of our bills off of what we produce here um and we're only probably two years away from uh return on investment on all of it um with what we're able to to raise and sell based on the water, the water production, and what we can do with it between uh, vegetables and raising livestock uh, and having pasture grass and, you know, pastured poultry. And so this stuff is a, uh, it was a no brainer for us. Once it, you know, once it pays for itself, um, then, you know, how many years do you get out of a Grunfos pump? 10, 15, easy. The pump is dangling in 75 feet of water. So any silt's not gonna be up that high. Well, yeah. on a pump in this application, it's pretty easy on it too. Unlike a, you know, like a typical pressure bladder style pump where that pump cycles every time you have demand. You know, this this thing will turn on once and run for, you know, multiple time. hours and then it gets a rest. You know, it's that start stop cycle that's it hard. It ramps on it too. So yeah. you know, the sun comes up, yeah. it starts pumping slowly, and you know, as soon as there's enough power to start making full production it's running like that yeah. until the sun sets so yeah. you're right like yeah, you cycling have, pumps is a lot harder on them than you don't have the multiple inrush and head pressure chain cycles it just this is the easiest way on the pumps you couldn't have done this any any better though because you know you're literally using the earth hmm. you know so you know put the energy into getting the water up there and then use the earth to bring it back down to where you need it whenever you do need it so it's it's, it's, a, it's exactly it, how you should do it yeah so. it's labor intensive to do it that way especially that spread that high elevation when you're dealing with the rocks and the material that we have here but once you're done i mean you're done for a lifetime you're you're you're, you're truly done um maybe some maintenance here and there but you know this is this was the best way to do it uh and, there was other there was other options that might have been a little bit more simple, um, but in the long run we wouldn't have the the choices that we have. We wouldn't have the abilities that we have. Um, so I don't re I don't regret spending the money on the water system at all. I mean it's the it's kind of the heartbeat of the property. And again, with all your solar stuff, 
and designs on what we needed. A guy like me that, you know, six years ago, I'd never driven a tractor. Uh, I had a little plumbing experience from uh, a high school job that I had, uh, plumbing swimming pools. But this all, this was all new to me. Um, so there was a lot of trial and error on my part, and there's a lot of stuff that I did wrong. Uh, but the basic design behind it is still the same as day one. You know, when I talk to you guys about, this is what I want to do, what do you think I need? We put all that stuff in. It was plug and play. It worked right from day one. And it was still working right up until the day we did the upgrade. Uh, the only reason that we did the upgrade is because we had grown the farm out. We needed more irrigation. We needed more water. But everything that I pulled out of the ground, uh, the solar panels, I mean, they're all ready for another application, whether I sell them to somebody else or I just have a backup pump sitting in the storage box just in case something ever happens yeah. or whatever. So have you have you calculated what you're getting up there? Is it about 12 gallons a minute, 11 gallons a minute? Um, we didn't put a bucket on it, um, but I can tell you that it is substantial. Um, I would say it's at least 11 gallons a minute. Um, based on the, the pump performance chart uh, and our head pressure and whatnot, we should be getting 12 gallons a minute yeah. without any problems at all. If you have a problem with your pump or your solar system with the storage tank up top, you, you can have this down to be repaired or in failure mode and you can still have water, like zero interruption. Mm -hmm. That's that's a huge, especially out here, it's, you don't you don't get a uh, technician to just show up, you know, maybe that day when you're 50 miles from town. And then the other thing too is, uh, and I think that's what you were alluding to, is like a lot of these people around here, they always want to build up at the highest part of their property because that's where the great view is. And there's a lot of drawbacks to doing that, but one of them is you can't do that gravity-fed return water. So now you have to pay extra money for a booster pump. You know, even if you've got water storage somewhere, then you got to booster pump it with a bladder tank up high. It's just a lot more expense to add. So the, the pump is only taking a, a max is 12 to 80. Is that, that so? When you're running the generator, that's what it shows. Twelve eighty. Yeah. yeah, and so then, it's pushing pretty hard. Yeah, I think the most the pump will do is about fourteen or fifteen hundred watts. When we yeah. just fired it up, when I put the new controller in, it peaked out at fourteen and then dropped back down for a little bit. I want to say like at twelve. Oh, okay. Just for a few minutes, and then it just kind of coasted back down to that. So I'm, I'm guessing that was the initial, you know, overcoming the inertia of all that head pressure. Well, there's four three hundred and sixty five watt REC Alpha modules. On the on the zone work tracker, and being that you have the zone work tracker, you probably get maybe seven to eight peaks on hours a day. So I mean, do that times twelve gallons a minute, seven or eight hours. I mean, it's probably what four or five thousand gallons a day. Yeah, yeah, we we pump a lot of water in a day. Yeah, I mean, we don't, can, we don't uh, need it. It's just, it's it's overkill. But when you've got you know at any given time, um, you know two different times of the year when we have you know, steers and pigs and chickens going, plus vegetable gardens, whatever. I mean, you're talking twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 worth of animals that need water constantly. So, uh, you know, rather than having a water truck and then having to be here, so it allows us to go do our, our product deliveries and be gone for 24 hours and everything's set up automatically. All the waters are automatic. The water system's automatic. We don't worry about animals running out of water. And that's, you know, they run out of water, you've got about seven or eight hours before you just start losing all sorts of money. So, yeah, it might, might seem like overkill, but it's just a big insurance policy. I don't see anything overkill here. It looks perfect. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Thank you for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, and comment.